Ibn Arabi expounds two commands of God with regard to human existence and happiness. Let's discuss it briefly. Basically, Muslim theologians also have this view that there are two commands of God, namely the existentiating command, or al ama at taqwini and the imposing command, al ama at taklifi The former is the existentiation of all entities that causes them to be themselves. In the Quran it is said, his command when he desires a thing is only to say it be and it is. Due to the existentiating command, all entities in the cosmos came into being. This command is absolutely unavoidable. No one can disobey the existentiating command. Well, the imposing command is related to human choice. Regarding the imposing command, God calls upon humans to obey him for the sake of their own happiness. In the existentiating command, no one can refuse. But in the imposing command, one can refuse, deny, and avoid obeying the command, either a part of it or all of it. Seen from Ibn Arabi's ontological point of view, refusing the imposing command is still obedience to the existentiating command. Nevertheless, the refusal of the imposing command causes cutthroat and torment. Although in the end, the torment will turn sweet. The existentiating command doesn't give any choice at all for humans. So humans don't have free will to avoid entering the realm of existence or the realm of virtue. However, in the imposing command, besides being imposed with commands, humans are also imposed with free will so they can choose whether they obey or not. And the obedience will lead them to happiness, while this obedience of course leads them to misery. Ibn Arabi says, All actions performed by a servant are divided into two types. Actions that can lead a person to achieve happiness, which is the reason why he is called by God, and actions that don't lead to happiness. The last type of action doesn't come from the call of Al-Haq or the command established in his divine law, but comes from his will and creation. The imposing command then becomes the sharia or the divine law that regulates humans so that they can achieve outward and inner happiness. In other words, it is the imposing command that gives rise to certain special attributes of virtue, such as guidance and compassionate, which can eliminate human suffering. In contrast, the existentiating command arises from non-delimited virtue or God as such. These two commands are inseparable. However, the imposing command is actually determined and embraced by the existentiating command for the purpose of accomplishing the ultimate goal. On the one hand, the existentiating command is completely appeared, while on the other, the imposing command enables humans to disobey it. Therefore, disobedience to the imposing command is still obedience to the existentiating command. Or we can say that the disobedience to the imposing command is still a form of obedience to the existentiating command. In other words, even though an action is contrary to the imposing command, it is actually not out of the existentiating command. Hence, an action can only be said to be bad or wrong, and then it is considered a sin, or vice versa, it is said to be good or right, and then it is given a reward, if viewed from the perspective of the imposing command. Because from the perspective of the existentiating command, all forms of human action are obedience, nothing else. Quote, the order which takes place in the world complies with divine will, not with established law, even if its establishment derives from God's will. It is worthy noting that Ibn Arabi distinguishes between essential divine free will, which establishes every occurrence in the cosmos and cannot be rejected by human beings, and God's desire which human beings can obey or disobey. Ibn Arabi explains why this being the imposing command can lead to grievous torment by referring to the implications of some of the qualities of wujud. According to him, God doesn't only appear as the guide, but also as the misguider. As a footnote, it is significant to keep in mind that the two contradicting divine names describes two aspects of God. The guide as the aspect of God's beauty, while the misguider as the aspect of God's majesty. Of the two aspects of the divine names, Islam itself 
asserts that the most dominant aspect is the aspects of beauty in which the divine names emerge as the compassionate, the merciful, the most loving, the all-forgiving, the giver of peace, and so on. The first two names, the compassionate and the merciful, are even considered to represent God himself. Even though Ibn Arabi often underlines the existential chain command in the broad framework of his view, namely Wahdatul Wujud, he insists that the existentiating command itself is not enough. The imposing command is very crucial to be obeyed for the sake of human happiness in this world and especially in the hereafter. The imposing command containing commands and prohibitions must be obeyed by humans throughout their lives. Ibn Arabi states, Know that the Sharia cuts towards the light, makes people happy, and becomes the path to happiness. Whoever obeys it will be saved, and whoever doesn't obey it will perish. The significance of obeying the imposing command in relation to Islam specifically is emphasized by Ibn Arabi by describing a hadith when God said, This indeed is my path made straight. The messenger of God made a straight line on the ground and several other lines to the right and left of the first straight line. Then he placed his finger on the first line and recited the Quran verse, This indeed is my path made straight, so follow it and follow not other ways. Well, pointing to the right and left lines, lest they separate you from his way. The imposing command certainly functions to regulate and organize human life in the cosmos, so that humans don't deviate from the divine law in which the imposing command is maintained. Ibn Arabi analogizes the Sharia with a lamp by which people are guided in their life's journey, and that journey is simply a journey of happiness. This path of happiness, according to him, is pleasant, easy, very clear, immaculate, uncomplicated, and straight. According to him, God reveals the imposing command as a guide for humans to build harmony and peace in the cosmos. And from the Sharia as the imposing command, humans can perfectly know God. Indeed, without the help of the Sharia, the human mind, which is very limited, will not be able to find the truth beyond this observable world. Thus, human happiness cannot be achieved perfectly and completely if humans only follow the existentiating command and disobey the imposing command. Ibn Arabi's explanation of the imposing command shows two important points. First, Ibn Arabi is very loyal to the Islamic Sharia. Even his mystical views were completely based on the Islamic Sharia. So it is absurd that people, especially Muslims themselves, accuse Ibn Arabi of having deviated from the Islamic path. Second, due to his loyalty, Ibn Arabi appeared as a Sufi who truly adhered to the Islamic revelation. In this regard, Ibn Arabi would like to emphasize says that the Sharia of other religions cannot bring people to the complete happiness. Even though he was aware of the essential unity of all beliefs, all of which are the paths to God, he still adhered to and was loyal to the path the Prophet Muhammad brought as the path of happiness and the best path to God. But as a closing, we should remember that this is Ibn Arabi's standpoint and he was a Muslim. So it cannot be justification to measure other religions. One cannot judge other religions from the perspective of his own religion. God knows the best. See you next time.